My void will consume you, if you ask nicely. Your will is no longer your own. Stay away from them. Twice! For the Lord! You have let the horde to place without honor. Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. Our world needs us, Jones. You got the Ovia in. <laughs> We cannot let the world fall to darkness. Have already lost. Put your faith in the light, and all is possible. Is it truly righteousness that drives you? Ah! I wonder. It is seem you have guessed. They are coming for you. This is the whispers of wars. Hello everyone and welcome to Whispers of War, show number 58. I'm your host Syl and unfortunately the Lurgy has still got me in its grip. Um, I still haven't been able to shake it for several weeks now and it seems to go up and down. Um, and at the moment it's a bit like bad, <laughs> let's just say it like it is. Um, but I didn't want to cancel the show, I don't think I should. Uh, I can do this even while I'm having a bit of a fever and I'm just not feeling too great. But if I sound a little bit less um, happy, <laughs> then that's why. Uh, so let's just start with how was my weekend well. Now because I didn't feel too great, I didn't want to sit behind the computer that much. I haven't even done all the other games uh, either, so don't blame it on that. I did manage to do a few things. I uh, managed in Classic WoW, let's start with that one. I managed to get halfway through level 32 and I think, you know, setting myself a goal of, yeah, five levels a week. No, that's not going to happen in Classic WoW. I think I really need to go for, hey, girl, if you can do a level a week, great. <laughs> it's just because there's so much other stuff to do. And I'm actually okay with that. I, I have to just change my way of thinking for Classic because it just goes a lot slower and, you know, things take a lot longer, like travel time and everything. And that's fine. And um, I started questing in... I, I keep saying Terran Mill, but I know it's not. Um, it's not that, you know, it's the South Shore area. And I had to go into a uh, Yeti cave to get this rod. I know it sounds really dodgy, but uh, that was one of those quests that you know you have to really, I want to say grind, and you know that sounds so wrong in this combination of rods. Um, you really have to kill a lot of yetis before you actually get what you need. It's one of those quests, and I was totally fine with that because, like I said in the previous episode, I quite like quests that really require me to grind and kill a lot of mobs before you finally get your item because that will help you level up because in all fairness you don't get a lot of experience from handing in the quests so that was fine I uh, I managed to get to 31 and now I'm halfway towards 32 just by you know killing some mobs just scouting the areas fiends can still easily kill me I have to say, it's uh, it's still a challenge, which is not a bad thing at all. But sometimes it gets a little bit like, okay, yeah, I'm kind of like done with this now. I want something else. I feel like you sometimes stick into the same area far too long. So I am trying to move between areas just so that I get a bit of change of scenery. Um, I'm going to see where I need to grind at level 31. And I think it might be Thousand Needles. Not that that is too great, but you know what? I think we might have to do it until we, we reach level 40. And hopefully by then I have some gold for a mount. Now I fear, because I'm a Tauren, I have to get the Ugly Kodo mount. Because I don't think I'm exalted yet with, or near exalted yet for Ogrimmar. I know I'm revered, but I think exalted might... I, I don't know. I, I need to get quests for Ogrimmar. And I'm not entirely sure where to get those at this kind of level because it all seems to be for either the Forsaken or for the Tauren themselves. So I don't know because I, I really want a wolf mount. I would prefer a wolf mount for my Tauren but I might have to start PvPing for that. So once we have the battlegrounds in place that might be a way of getting my, uh, my mount. So 
we shall see. I'm not in a rush. Uh, God knows I'm not going to get to 40 anytime soon. So that's my time in Classic. Very slow. And then I went to BFA. And uh, one thing I didn't tell you guys last week was um, what happened during Brewfest. Now, Brewfest, I told you that there was this new sausage eating contest sort of thing, right? And I know, funny, funny sausage fest. Um, <laughs> however, something really weird happened to my character. So my character decided, you know what, or actually I decided that, uh, let's, let's try this. Uh, I'm sure it's funny. So... I, I sat my ass down on the chair, but this, and I don't know what it's called, but there was this, this um, bowl of ocean water that you can fish in. And I'm sure lots of people are like, oh, it's the hyper whatever, I don't know, fishing thing. Um, and it was blocking my view. <laughs> like, I could not see my character or anyone else. All I heard were the sounds of her eating sausages. Now, that's kind of like a challenge because you're like, okay, you don't get any visual cues of, okay, she needs to drink water now because she's choking on a sausage. <laughs> and it sounds so wrong. But it, I'll tell you something, it sounds even worse. So if you just have to go by sound and you think you're choking sounds of a sausage, that's when I just started pressing the water and um, I just lost to someone else with one sausage. Um, so yeah, that was an experience. That was really, really odd. Uh, it did make me laugh, but yeah, it's weird having to go by the choking sounds instead of the visual cues. So, oh well. So that was my uh, my little stint with proof fest. Um, after that, I thought this week, you know what? Let's just let's just start the bee mount quests. Um, and I have the little bee. So that finally happened. I have my little bumbles and then I started the starter quest and now I just need to go out there and find jellies. Uh, I'm not in a rush. I know you can get them quite easily from the auction house, but I don't really want to spend my gold on that. Maybe if I get really desperate at the end and I'm so sick of trying to fly uh, through Storm, uh, uh, I want to say Stormwind, but it's not Storm, uh, Storm Song Valley. If I'm really, really sick and tired of that, then yeah, I, I might do that. But at the moment, I'll, you know, now and again I just do it for an hour a day. Uh, if I feel like it, maybe in the weekend I'll do it a bit more. There's no rush to get that mount. It will be in game for a very long time. So that's fine. Um, I got the little fez for my bee pet after I killed the honey smasher, which is, you know, cute. I think it's really, really cute. Um, so I heard that you can also, you know, if you want to really, really utilize and do it quick, I guess you can also kill the Honey Smasher with all your alts once they are at that point and just send it to, to your main character who's collecting the jellies. Again, I'm not really that fast. I don't really, it, it will happen when it happens for me. I did manage to turn off the, the, the ground clutter. I, I managed to just turn it off to nothing because it's so much easier to try and spot the jellies I mean my my uh, range of viewing is still quite far which is great uh, and as a druid I have to admit it's pretty easy just flying over things and you don't have to dismount or anything you, you can just loot the jellies in flight form um, that was all fun uh, you know as far as fun things go with collecting shit constantly over and over. I like the events, but I have seen, uh, I, I don't know if it's a bit of griefing or just, I don't know, or if it's just by accident. Let's just say, you know, benefit of the doubt, it's accident. I see a lot of hordies who start the events and then it bugs out for alliance, meaning that there is no big jelly cone that you can loot in the end. Now I'm wondering if that's a little bit of griefing um, or if it's really an accident but yeah that's happening a lot. I, I personally don't really care because I'm like well I can still loot the big mobs and if they drop a quest item so be it. Um, I don't mind that much but it's interesting so I'm wondering if you guys experience that and like everyone knows I play both factions. I don't really care. Um, I, I have nothing against either faction, if I'm honest, so 
yeah, I just I found it weird because that was not like a one-off uh, instance that it happened. It has happened several times now. So that's that. That's everything for the bee mount. Um, I have to admit that I find the um, the dancing that the queen bee does uh, to talk to is it Barry? <laughs> Very cute. I find the dancing with the the butt and the wiggle uh, adorable. So yeah, I like that. I really like that. Um, other than that, I did the war campaign on my Blood Elf Rogue, um, who is a traitor against Sylvanas. Uh, I had a very hard time picking with her in the end. I was really like, am I going traitor or not? And then, you know, trolls and, and orcs just win it, so she's a sucker for those. And she went traitor. Um, yeah, it was alright. Um, it, it, it's not a bad way of doing it, but it, it's very much as if you're doing the alliance side, really, except that, you know... Your video ends a bit different because you're not going back to uh, Boralus, so it was okay. I'm, I'm not like blown away by it all, um, but I really feel I need to level my undead, my undead mage, and make her a Sylvanas loyalist. And I've just because I want to see the rest, you know, I want to see the other cutscenes, even though I've already seen them on YouTube. I still want to experience it for myself. Now my undead mage is a 110, so it shouldn't really take me that long realistically. But I'm finding leveling a little bit of a, I don't know, a chore that I, I need to find something to make it more interesting. Because when you level, it's always the same thing. You do quests or you do dungeons, and I, I want to try something else to see if I can find something to make leveling more interesting. So um, I am going to uh, peruse the internet to see what other people do. But if you have any tips, let me know. So that's it for BFA. And I honestly can't wait for Hallow's End because that is my most favorite in-game holiday. I love everything that has to do with Halloween, even though I'm Dutch and we don't really do anything with Halloween. And I don't really think that the UK does either, even though they are getting more and more influenced by uh, the USA when it comes to Halloween. But, and there's nothing wrong with that because I like creepy stuff. So it's fine that we get some influence from, from uh, America. But it's still not really, you know, I always make sure I have treats for the kids that might come into our street. But uh, no, <laughs> no one really comes to our house for any treats. So I guess me and my boyfriend have to sacrifice ourselves and just eat it all ourselves. That I don't know. So yeah, unfortunately, it's not happening again. I think this year, maybe this year will be sort of like lucky when we we can give our candy away. I don't know. Um, but I'm looking forward at least to it in game. At least I get some proper Halloween there. And those candy buckets, really good for experience. So I think I just have to log in on my alts, make sure that they can go somewhere to get the experience. You know, plan out some routes for certain levels where to go. And it will all help. Uh, it, it, it's, I guess, another way of doing the leveling bit. So, uh, yeah. I think I'm going to uh, to give that a go. So, yeah, I didn't even have to go to the internet for that. So, let's go to something that is much more interesting than my Wicked Wow. Which is World of Warcraft news. Um, okay. There is a lot of news for Blizzard. Especially when... I'm, I'm just going to slightly skim over it. The whole Hong Kong situation. I I know a little bit of it. Like um, I'm, I'm nowhere as deep into the whole situation as I think a lot of other people are. So I'm very much for the whole freedom of speech. That's that's all I'm saying. And uh, I think certain things that I've seen in the news are very scary and uh, very concerning with what's going on. I'm not going to say much about what Blizzard did. I can say that I don't agree with what they did to begin with. I see damage control. That's what I see now. That's all I'm going to say about it. So, you know, if you want to really dive into deeper uh, stances, there are so many people giving their, their opinions. I would go to them. But I don't feel like it's my place to, to say a lot. I'm just... I guess I'm just a little bit disappointed with how Blizzard handled it initially. That's that's really me. Right. Things that I maybe know a little bit more about, which is the um, allied races. 
which have been data mined. So we are not data mined. We it has actually been announced. So we're getting Fulpira and Mechanomes, which hey, you know I play both sides. I'm very happy that we're getting Fulpira for the horde. Um, it's cool. I think it's nice that we get a fuzzy race again on that side because you know everyone had like the worgen and now we're getting foxes. So I'm happy with that. And I think you totally should make a uh, a Volpira Ranger and <laughs> call it call it Robin Hood if you can. Try to find a transmog. I've already seen really cute images of um, foxes who look like Robin Hood, the Disney one. So yeah, I'm I think it's cool and uh, I I like. The, the the aesthetics of both races. Now I'll be honest, I'm not as enthusiastic about mecha gnomes as as Volpira. But that's just because the mecha gnomes really did nothing for me. I just thought it's just another gnome with like a terminator arm or eye and it's just not for me at all. Um, luckily the requirements I've already have that uh, when it comes to Volpira. So you need to have done um, Voldoon as Horde, so you need to do that quest line. You need to get exalted for the Voldenai, and that is all done and dusted for me. So I'm happy to get my my fox. Now with Mecha Gnomes, it's a little bit diff different, and I feel like again that requirement is a little bit harder than it actually is for the Horde. And I have the same feeling with the Iron Dwarves. Um, even though it wasn't that difficult because for the Iron Dwarfs you need to go to a dungeon to get an item. But you didn't have to do anything like that for Horde. And seeing the requirement for the Mecha Gnomes, so you have to get exalted with the Rust Bolt resistance, which is fine. You know, you, you can grind that out. But you also have to finish the quest line and get the achievements for all the, the quests for Mecha Gnome. But that also requires you to go into Mechagon. And that is not like an easy dungeon. Even if you do it on like, like you know, you don't have like normal settings, but I believe. I think it's like equal to a hero, not heroic or mythic. That requires a lot more, um, not per se skill, but at least, you know, effort. And I can foresee a lot of people really not being happy with that. I'll be honest, I'm not really happy with that. And I'm sure that I can find groups. I mean, you have the, the custom-made group finder. But even so, you know, I can I can foresee people who have a little bit of group anxiety being a bit like, oh great, I can't do this all on my own. I need to be in a, in a dungeon or I need to find a group that is happy with boosting or... Yeah, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. So... Mm. Very odd that they keep asking Alliance to, to go into dungeons and raids and, and things like that just to unlock certain bases. Very strange. Um, other than that, I've also seen a picture of the new Raffian model, which is great. I think he looks uh, very good as a dragon. <laughs> um, I Yeah, I, I like what they did with his dragon model. At least he doesn't look like a whelpling anymore. He, um, he looks a little bit bigger now. So make sure that you go to Wowhead or something if you want to see his model. I think it looks cool. Now there was something else that people um, found which were um, Death Knight skins. Or at least like the, the gear for allied races. And I know that people have been asking for Death Knights for the allied races. I don't know how I feel about that if I'm honest. Um, I still find a Panda Death Knight weird really weird and I know that there's also the light forged who can become death knights and I already found that a little bit like hmm, how does a draenei feel about that but a light forged yeah that's hmm, that's really really odd uh, I don't know how they're going to do that so you know Bolfar or the Lich King has played a role in in this expansion now that we know that you know, spoiler, his daughter is present uh, in the game at the moment. Uh, I, I foresee that something is going to happen with that. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm very curious to see where the story goes. And of course, the thing that excites everyone, there are alpaca mounts. That's just where I'm going to leave it. Alpaca mounts, they jump, 
I think, you know, if we get these, that's amazing and you can just... I don't know. That's it. I, I'm, I, I want to end it on a high, basically, with the WoW news. So that's really it. Um, yeah. And now I'm going to leave you with a lovely interview I had with Melanie, also known as Dragon Ray. And we talk a lot about uh, WoW cookbooks and, and, and food and, you know, who doesn't want to hear about food so <laughs> i'll leave you with the interview and i'll see you on the flip side when we talk a little bit about rp and of course what you guys said on twitter and with me today i'm being joined by a very early riser it's 5 30 for her in the morning i'm never going to do that that early welcome melanie Thank you for having me. <laughs> so for those who haven't figured it out, Melanie's all the way over in, in Melbourne. Down under. <laughs> ah, yes, we've had many Australians on the show, but it's, uh, it's a challenge with the times. But you are so great with saying, yeah, I'll get up at 5.30. <laughs> it's, you know, it's fine. It's okay. Just, I need coffee. <laughs> We'll get to that eventually. I love every, Austra uh, every Aussie I get on who, who goes early in the morning. Oh, it's fine. I have coffee. So <laughs> I love it. I don't have coffee. I wish I was the other ones. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll get a big bucket of coffee afterwards. Um, Definitely will. <laughs> Melanie, can you tell the listeners, except that we know that you're from Australia. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a, I'm a lady gamer. Have been gaming for a very long time. So um, one of my first games that I ever played was a game called Ragnarok. Ooh, I like um, that one. The RPG, not the not the anime version mm -hmm. thing, but um, I absolutely love that game. Got me addicted. So um, I'm married with two cats, and uh, I'm a pretty big D and D nerd as well. That's a recent addition to my addictions, nice. um, aside from WoW, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, you know, I've always lived in Melbourne. Um, I lived in Sydney briefly for a little bit, not very long, but Melbourne's my hometown, so yeah. Nice. And you do a little bit of writing, if I'm if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, I'm a blogger. Have been a blogger for a very long time, um, as a Rothian life if you follow me, um, but um, I, I take breaks from blogging every now and again because I find it really difficult to keep content that's interesting. I, I think a lot of people are going to um, YouTube now mm -hmm. and Twitch and blogging seems to be a little bit old school, I think, so I don't know whether I have to up, update <laughs> or not, but I know I like writing, so I probably won't switch to anything else, but yeah. I think there's still a, um, a lot of bloggers out there and, and I, I know from a few friends who, who followed a lot of blogs that they still do. I think it's a different pace, isn't it? Because you, at least mm. the book you can read it whenever you want to and it's, it's about a subject that you really like and mm. if you take a break you can always go back to it. Whereas with as much as I like YouTubes and, and Twitch and all those things, it's you have to be at the right time to actually listen to it whereas really mm. you can do almost anywhere so no, yeah. I, I still think blogs are there but yeah there is a lot of competition out there nowadays with people who do fla the flashy things with the YouTube I guess mm. yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not video willing <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's just typing for me you're <laughs> behind the screen it's all good yeah and you know, I still think that it, that's a good thing. I think we still need the, the Warcraft bloggers really out there. Okay, so let's jump into World of Warcraft. Are you Horde or Alliance? Horde. Ah, good, good. <laughs> I'm a Horde. Um, I did actually, when I first started playing, I started as Alliance and mm -hmm. um, absolutely love the Draenei race. Like if, if Draenei were Horde, I would have all of my tunes as Draenei, but um, I haven't got a, a horde favorite, so I've kind of got a mix of classes and races. But yeah, I'm a hordy now. So, <laughs> so how come you switched to horde? Um, well, funny story. <laughs> <laughs> when we um, first got into WoW, um, one of our best friends bought us the game. 
because we were playing Guild Wars at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, no, Guild Wars is crap. Try, wow, it's so much better. So we, um, he bought us our first packs, but he played Alliance. And obviously to play with him and to be able to speak to him even, uh, you had to pick the same faction. So we had to go Alliance whether we wanted to or not. And um, both me and my husband at the time both wanted to be Horde because we liked the, the um, Tauren race. Mm -hmm. We are like, oh, the Taurans are so cool. They're big cows. And that's you know, awesome when you're first starting. And um, yeah, we couldn't do it. So we had to stay Alliance um, until the guild that we were in sort of did the whole collapse with the 40 man to 20 man raids and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff so um that's when we switched so I think it was bc maybe that we switched to horde um and okay. we've pretty much been horde since yeah okay not a bad choice um so so yeah. what do you play nowadays on the horde um i'm actually a druid the last two expats i changed from the mage i don't even played a mage before mm -hmm. and uh, the last two X-Packs, I, I switched to Druid to try something different. Um, uh, play Boomkin and I tank occasionally. So, yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So you already said that, um, you know, you switched from Guild Wars to World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. when, when did the game really grab you that you went like, yeah, this is it for me? <clears throat> um, the day that my friend, like, logged us in as himself and let us play. I was, at the, the first time I logged in, he brought his computer down because we used to do LANs, you know, back in the yeah. old days. <laughs> you bring, you'd bring your computers together and you'd all LAN together and it was great fun. Um, we played Rise of Nations and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, as I said, we were playing Guild Wars and he came down when we came with his computer and he was like, no, no, I'm going to log into WoW. And he logged in and he was, he was a druid. And I remember he was running around um, in Badlands and he was in travel form so it was a little you know, yellow cat at the time and then he changed into something else and he changed into something else and I was like oh my god this game's amazing <laughs> and um and he said oh, I'll just create a count for you or create a tune for you and created a little mage for me and I was running around I didn't get very far like I don't even think I got through like to level one or anything um I think I got like halfway through um but just I loved the graphics so the second I logged in and saw the graphics I just I love the, the, that it's a, like a comic sort of cartoon style. I was just, oh, that's it. This is this is me. I love it. So <laughs> I, I was hooked from day one. I didn't log into Guild Wars ever again. <laughs> it was just, it was, wow, that was it. Yeah. Nice. Okay, good, good. Um, right, we're going to talk about your main topic. Now, actually, you had two. Um, and I want to start with the raiding first, because you wanted to talk a little bit about raiding. Um, so why why did you pick uh, raiding as a topic? Uh, it's one of those things that I've always loved doing mm -hmm. in the game. It's it's the, pretty much the reason why I play WoW. I love raiding, I'm slightly obsessively about it. Um, but I'm I'm not to the level of oh, I want to do mythic level raiding. I just I'm I don't have the time for that. <laughs> the time investment to do mythic. Mm -hmm. But I do absolutely love the teamwork factor of raiding, and I think that that's something that people don't necessarily talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they like the raiding because of gear and this and that. And I like it because I get to be in a group with, you know, 15, 20 other people that I actually really get along with and have a laugh with. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. And I, I think that that is sometimes missed by people. They, they get so focused on, on the end goal instead of just have a bit of have a bit of fun and enjoy the company of the people that you're playing with i mean you're paying a lot of money every month to spend a lot of time in game mm -hmm. and i think that we should enjoy enjoy that time because why else would you play it if you didn't yeah. enjoy it um but i think it's something that's lost on a lot of people and for me um it, it's the main reason behind raiding I'm, i i like the social aspect of it and yeah that's why I like talking about raiding in my blog and I like to talk about what people did and how funny it was and how we stuffed up and and I I, I started raiding back in Molten Core so my experience of raiding is you know you wipe a lot and you spend weeks trying to get a boss down and that's part of the journey and now 
it seems to me that people don't want to do that. They don't want to wipe. They want to go in and overgear everything so that you can face roll through. And then, so I'm like, well, why bother? Mm-hmm. Like, what's yeah. if you don't want to have that sort of build up of teamwork and, and, and working through something and the challenge of it? I'm not sure that what the purpose is. So it's one of those little conundrums that I'm stuck with at the moment. Is, you know, do I still love raiding as much as I used to, or has the raiding scene changed so much that I don't fit that anymore? <laughs> How do you think it has changed? Um, what do you think the cause for that is? Um, I think partly that um, Blizzard have made it so easy to get purples. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's in purples all the time now. Like, that purples is, is what you have, and they drop every boss drops. Um, it never used to be that way. You know, back <clears throat> early days, we used to only have a couple of pieces of purple. You know, getting a, a, a big piece of gear was, you know, look at look at us. We've we've done this and we've killed the boss and it took a long time to get there. Whereas now it's just, um, as one of my friends said, he he leveled to 120 and then within a week we he'd been fully kit out with all purples and all really good gear um, through all the various methods that you can get them now. So it's from. I don't think that the, the focus is not the gear anymore because you can get it so easily. You can do a Mythic Plus, you can do the War Fronts, you can do Island Expeditions, you can do all these different things to get gear. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's changed the perspective of a lot of people because they're only raiding just to get the rest of the, the purples now. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas it's not a focus on we need a group of 40 people, or we need a group of 25 people to go in and and kill this boss together and we need to work at it, we need to push ourselves, we need to get there. But that's gone now, I, don't, I, I think. Um, but flexibility raids, the flex raids would have helped make that worse as well because you don't need to have a team. You mm-hmm. can just go in with whoever you want and it doesn't really matter now. As long as you've got two tanks, a couple of healers, you can take in as many other people as you like and it doesn't matter. I, I think, you know, there's yeah. No... You, you get that as well, like, for instance, if you jump in, in LFR, it's like what you said, uh, uh, even a lot of people are like, oh, we don't need tactics, it's LFR. Mm. <clears throat> exactly. Just ignore the mechanics, completely ignore them. I'd hate to see some of the bosses in LFR actually for the for this current one because there's so much mechanics required and movement. I, I don't want to do LFR. I haven't done LFR yet, I'm too scared. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now I, I can imagine. So how did that start for you? Because you said you started in Molten Core. How, how did you find out that that was such a big thing for you? Um, so were you prepared at all for what a raid would be like? No, no not at all. had no idea. Because <laughs> um, our friend that got us into the game, I'm going to call him Apophis, it's easier. <laughs> um, he was like, oh yeah, you know, when you get to 60 then... You basically you sort of do raiding. That was kind of all you did. You know, you got to end game, mm-hmm. and then you raided. Um, but you had to be good enough to be in the raid, and obviously the the raid was 40 man, so you pretty much had a shot of getting in. Um, so it wasn't too bad. And then I remember, um, you know, when you when you first join a guild and you, you first join, you're gonna join your first raid. You want to try and, you know, part of the team and, and help out and. Um, so I had, I went in and I remember, I remember this, I went in with like absolutely nothing in my bags, nothing at all, because I had no idea that I needed to, you know, take all this stuff and, and make all this food and water. <laughs> so I didn't you know, you know, I just, I went in there with nothing and um, they one of the, the, the class lead at the time said to me, oh, you may as well start making water since you're here early and food. And I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, you got to make it for 40 people. I was like, oh, shit. So we sat there and. Like the two of us sat there and my whole bags were full of food and water and then you know, as people would come in you just hand out food and water and um, I remember thinking this is just ridiculous like I, I have, you know you have to get there half an hour early to sit there and pass to make drink manner and, uh, anyway ridiculous um, but then we walked into MC to Molten Core and the, such this it was such a big cavern it was to me to my mind it was epic it was so amazing and you had these big molten giants at the front and it was just there was 40 of us standing there and, and you know you wipe on the first two trash mobs <laughs> like that was just normal you know um and i thought that, that was amazing to to walk into this place where it was so hard to kill anything and i felt really small 
on the screen compared to these two big monsters and I just yeah and the boss fights were so complicated <laughs> I say that now they were so complicated <laughs> um, no and they're not but they were so complicated and you had to do this and you had to decurse people and you know it was just it was just amazing to me that a group of 40 people could manage to get together and to do this and to kill something that had so much health and I remember like our, Sundays were my favourite day because Sundays was the day that we raided for like, you know, you, mm -hmm. you block out your whole Sunday and you raid from like 9 till, you know, 2 o'clock or something, you have a lunch break. Wow. Yeah, well, the, the instances were so huge, you know, and, and you had to run everywhere. <laughs> it was a lot of running involved. If you died and you had to run back, you had to wait for to get rest. <laughs> like it was, you know, you wasted a lot of time back then. It but was a I loved hard. it. Mm. I also remember um, back in the day, because um, I'm sure you remember that as well, especially with a lot of wiping came. Okay, yeah, guys, my gear, um, I need to repair it now. So everyone has the hard stuff <laughs> and then we <laughs> summon them back. Yep. Yep. Remember that too? Yeah. But I'm, I miss that. Like, I know it, like it's horrific and I don't want to go to classic because I don't, well, I don't need, I don't need to relive the pain, mm -hmm. but I miss, I miss that sense of, you know, 40 people working together to, to achieve something great and it was and it was at that time it felt great it was like oh my god this is amazing look what we've done you know we've actually achieved killing this big thing it took 40 years 40 of us to do it now it's just like eh eh you know mm. we don't need 40 people but yeah i love writing <laughs> no, that, that, that's a good thing um do you think um what what does blizzard need to change in order to get that feeling back. Ooh. I mean, for her, that's a question. Um, what I think one of the things that annoys me the most is the fact that um, the gear upgrades are so wonky. Mm -hmm. And I say that they're not really that wonky, though. The thing is that they're great for people that don't raid. You can get gear by any means that you have available to you, which is fantastic. So it means people aren't locked into having to do raiding to get you know, the best that they can get at a time. Um, and raiding shouldn't be the end goal for everyone. That's not, you know, people want to PVP, people want to do mythics, it's all different. There's a lot of options now, which is fantastic. And I don't think necessarily that you should have to go back to, you know, only having raiding in end game because that was all there was really, that or PVP. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't necessarily think they need to change anything um, because I think you need to give people options. And I think if you don't, then that's when you're going to lose players. And, you know, people are used to it now. They're, they're used to the fact that you can get gear through multiple means. Um, and I don't think, it, I don't think that, they're, that, that it's Blizzard's responsibility to change the team work or the, the team environment that you get from that because I'm sure that, you know, there's PVPers out there, and I wouldn't know, I'm not a PVPer, mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure that they've got a team of people that, you know, that have the same challenge and teamwork experience that I have when I raid. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that there's much that Blizzard could actually change to make that feeling any better because, you know, that's the other thing as well, I guess, is that I've been raiding for a very long time, so... Mm -hmm. I don't have that epic feeling necessarily every time I walk into a raid, but there are bosses where I go, oh yeah, that was that was a good one. Like, you did a good job on that one. It was really hard and, you know, I felt really good when we killed it. Um, and I think that that's important too. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's much that they could change because you've got, you've got too many people now that want too many different things and I think they're doing a good job of, of keeping us in the game anyway. They're giving a lot of options to people. So... Can't really complain about that. To be fair, no. Do you think the attitude might change once Classic comes out again, and we will be confronted with old old school raiding, and people will go like, "Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> that's been yeah. different." Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how that pans out because I think I think there's a lot of things about Classic that the people that played Classic have forgotten about. But mm -hmm. the ones who never played it are just going to be like, this is beyond, this is just ridiculous. But we thought it was awesome at the time because it was new and it was exciting and, you know, that's how you played. But I think, um, I think there's going to be a lot of people that, if they even can get 40-man groups off the ground now, like, you know, we're so used to flexible raids. 
that I'm I'm not even sure you're going to be able to get 40 people together, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe that, you know, the hardcore, hardcore people, but 40 people is a lot to get together, like, from a scheduling point of view, yeah. let alone to actually pay attention to what they're doing and, oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I'm, I can't wait to see how that pans out for when people come back to normal and go, oh, yeah, well, that's a bit different, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. They had to have resist sets and people, spells didn't hit and you couldn't be a uh, you know, specific spec because things were immune to fire. <laughs> like, people don't think of that because it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I, I think it will be interesting as well. Um, mm. I, I will foresee the first people who don't have the patience because it's so weird. You don't really think about it anymore. But I remember that we stood there sometimes for like 20 minutes just waiting until everyone was ready and we all had to mm. like count down when to start potting and to make sure that okay <laughs> now we're pre-hotting and everything and and let's yeah. go and make sure that the tank has three sunders on before you do anything <laughs> <laughs> oh the, the three sunders is going to be the killer for a lot of people because we don't wait anymore we don't no. have to wait you just go straight in it's but go now, go go <laughs> classic was like we waited five sunders so yeah like you know and thankfully at least i guess these days they've got you know voice comms and all that kind of stuff and you know mods are better and um but you know initially we didn't have voice comms i don't remember it mm -hmm. i don't remember us having voice comms straight off the bat maybe we did but um you know you still have to wait for people to say yeah go for it you know <laughs> just stand there waiting yep mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> yeah. it's not gonna go well for people but good on blizzard for trying anyway <laughs> It's going to be interesting, I think. Mm, yeah. If you had to pick your all-time favorite raid, which would it be? Um, my all-time favorite raid. You know, it's I have to. I have to. I say this with a little bit of, well, you know. I guess rose-colored eyes, but mm -hmm. I actually quite enjoy the Eternal Palace as a raid. Okay. I'm actually really enjoying, aside from a really a couple of really horrible bus flights that are in there for casters, um, I actually really enjoy a lot of the mechanics and the boss fights in it. They're not they're they're challenging enough that you know they keep you interested during the fight, but they're not to the point where um, you can't do anything or you're completely incapacitated the whole time and you're just running around like a mad chook. Um, I actually really, really like the Eternal Palace as a as a raid zone. I think it's really good, except for Radiance over Shara. They could just take that boss out and we'd all be happy, but <laughs> can't have everything. Um, and mm, I want to say Blackwing Lair was pretty good too. I liked Blackwing Lair. Yeah, I have fond memories of that one. Yeah, yeah. I liked it because I had a, I had something to do in Blackwing Lair that was, you know, when I look back, you know, with the the mages used to have to do the blizzard to on Nefarian and we used to have to pick our lower spell level mm -hmm. so that we would still do the slow but we wouldn't cost our mana and yeah, I have fond memories of, of that. It was, you know, it was a fun time. Okay. Yeah. The other subject you wanted to talk about and I've never had anyone talk about that before, so I'm I'm quite curious about that one. Is the Azul <laughs> cookbook? Um, yeah. I've I've seen it come by now and again on my Facebook timeline with people in in the Warcraft communities that I'm part of, and I've I've seen it on Amazon. But why this one? Ah, oh, it's I want them to do like another six or seven of them. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, I absolutely adore a lot of the recipes that are in there. Um, I've, I, I make a lot of the food in there quite often, especially when I've got gaming friends, because I can like, wow, I made this from the Warcraft cookbook. <laughs> um, I think I'm crazy, but it sits on my kitchen bench. It's like my main display cookbook, because I think it's a good talking point for people. They're like, what, you cook the food from the game? And I'm like, oh, it's fantastic. Um, I even went to the, uh, <laughs> a couple of, well, maybe last year, I think, uh, I went to the effort of trying to um, find new recipes that I could maybe make up. That mm -hmm. from in game, and it just it just got too complicated. My spreadsheet ended up this convoluted mess of ingredients, <laughs> is how I gave up. 
Um, but I should try and start that up again because I absolutely, absolutely love the food in that cookbook. It's fantastic. And I've got, I've seen other people that um, have the same woman. She did one for ESO, I think, was ESO. Okay. Um, and they say the food in that is fantastic as well. So, I mean, I don't play ESO, but yeah. The food would be similar, I guess, to ours. So maybe I should buy it anyway. Um, That's really nice. That's nice to hear. Yeah, but it's really like if you, like if the recipes aren't that bad. Like there's um there's the one my favourite recipe that I've made heaps of times now is the beer basted beer basted boar ribs. Yeah. It's a special Thunder Brew recipe from the dwarves. Um, it's fantastic. Like it's absolutely fantastic recipe. That, and I I'm a big cooker. I'm, I like baking and stuff. So mm -hmm. for me it's like this is just heaven. I'm eating the food in the game. You know, I love it. Slightly obsessed about <laughs> if, if you would have to rate it for someone who who um, doesn't cook much, I'm raising my hand here. Um, <laughs> on a scale from one to ten, how how difficult would it be for someone who, you know, I know how not to burn stuff, but what would you say for this? Um, I def definitely give it a shot because the recipes are really really easy to follow. Um, they've even got. Um, at the top of the recipes they've got like whether they're hard or easy like what skill level you need to have to oh, nice. do it um, there are some really really simple recipes in there like just you know mix a whole bunch of, bunch of stuff together and as long as you can work out what ingredients you need um, and read it <laughs> you should just <laughs> throw them all together and throw it in a pan basically um, give it a bit of a stir so some of them are actually quite simple um, but it's got everything in there it's got breads it's got meat it's got vegetables um, desserts like it's got some of the chocolate cake and the Conjured, conjured mana buns and stuff like that so like some of it's a bit more complicated but yeah it's definitely definitely easy to follow and easy to, to cook with it I have not had a problem with any of the recipes at all so they're quite easy that's good to hear that's uh, now yeah. I, oh, oh don't go to Amazon just yet I need to wait until I start ordering <laughs> <laughs> how did you find out about this book oh uh, because I'm you know obsessed so I kind of like follow a lot of things that mm -hmm. you know just I follow Blizzard and I follow anything that has Warcraft as a tag <laughs> I'm like checking it out <laughs> you know I have like the the Warcraft Monopoly and I have Tribute Pursuit and yeah I anything Warcraft I, I quite like so you know nice. I, I follow a lot of it yeah and I because I like cooking so much I saw the cookbook and I was like well there's there's no question <laughs> that has to go <laughs> in the collection so yeah, just I wish there was more. Like I want more recipes. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably try and start making my own ones up again and see how that goes. But can always make your own and then you know have it on your blog or something because that I would yeah. definitely look for stuff like that. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and create some. I, yeah, no, I think it would be really cool. I always like to see people's creativity, so that, yeah, I, I think I will have to uh, start looking into that cookbook, so mm. that's a good one. All right. It's definitely worth it. <laughs> uh, that's that's good, because I think they're they're not super expensive, but they're also not on the super cheap side, are they? Because it's all no. hardback and everything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to basically really want to, like, either be obsessed with Warcraft like me, <laughs> or be good, at, really good at cooking, or want to be interested in cooking, or something to to want to buy a cookbook for Warcraft. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's a very niche kind of thing to buy, but yeah, hey, it's worth if, it for me. If those mana buns get my my guy to play Warcraft finally with me, who knows? I might have to <laughs> I might have to try it out. Um, I would try the Dalaran brownie first. Okay. If you buy it. the Dalaran brownie recipe is absolutely off the wall. It's brilliant. I had a friend once, I made it, we had, had a whole bunch of people over and I made the Dalaran brownie recipe because it's quite easy to make, it's a brownie mm -hmm. for God's sake. Um, and he was licking the plate clean basically, like the big plate <laughs> that the brownie was on. He was licking that because it was so good. So definitely do that one, it'll win him over. I, I like that one, I will keep uh, that in mind <laughs> when I do that. Because he doesn't like a brownie, let's face it. Exactly, they're the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Melanie, is there anything else that you would like to say about raiding or or the cookbook before I jump back into battle for Azeroth? No, no, let's let's jump back in. It's all good. Okay. So, what are you most impressed with in BFA, and what are you the least impressed with? 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the most impressed with BFA is I'm. I really like. Um, I, I'm going to do a bit of a thing here where I like it, but I hate it at the same time. Um, I really like that they've added in so many different things like the island expeditions and the war fronts um, that, I mean, it allows you to do so much in the game if you're a filthy casual like me, mm -hmm. that, you know, we can log in and we've got things that we can go and do when there's no pressure to do them. Um, I mean, it helps obviously if you want to do raiding, for example, or be top level gear or, you know, best PVP or whatever. But if you're just a casual like me who wants to jump into the game and have a bit of a laugh with people while you know you're running around doing stuff, the war fronts and the island expeditions, and a lot of the world quests even are just really easy and quick, and you can get them done. Um, and they're a lot of fun. They're they're new and different, and they I think they're really good. Um, on that same note, though, I don't like the fact that gear is so readily available from everywhere because it like I feel that what do I bother raiding for if if I have to do a million and a half things to get good enough gear to even raid to walk in and face roll things mm -hmm. I would rather not have gear available so easily through all these war fronts and, and you know, weekly quests and daily quests and all this kind of stuff um, and allow raiding to be my one source of um, of gear but I'm not in it for the gear they're only pixels to me I prefer the relationship human relationship so it's kind of like a, um, I love it, but I hate it at the same time. So, and I don't like the fact that they took, what, 12 months to get flying out to us, 11 months or something. Um, that's pretty, I think that's pretty unfair. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, wasn't impressed with that. <laughs> no, I think a lot of people weren't in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any good tips or a good tip? for the listeners when it comes to Battle for Azeroth? Oh, good tips. Well, prior to getting flying, I would have said make sure that you pick the option that lets you use your whistle right next to the flight master. It takes you downstairs really quickly um, <laughs> if, if you're up the top. Um, but now it, most people have flying by now, I think, so you don't have to be an issue. It doesn't, have, it doesn't matter. Um, um, what other tips? Make sure you get contracts when you're trying to get your rep up because mm. contracts will save your life and do the Dark Moon Fair with rep. I don't do any of those things. I know about them and I just don't do them. <laughs> I should, but I don't. <laughs> it requires effort to go to Dark Moon Fair and get a buff to go back to the quest. <laughs> so, but that's a good tip for everyone. Just make sure you go and do it. Yeah, no, I think especially if people are still grinding rep for, um, for the flying, Mm. That is a, a great way of doing it, even though, you know, like you say, some people don't really want to go out of there, but I keep forgetting about the contracts, so... Yeah, yeah. The That's contracts the... are the best thing in there, like, just go in and you get extra rep for it. It's, it's stupid to not do it, but, you know. Yeah. I'm not a descriptor either, so you have to go and buy them and remember that you got them on, yeah. It's one oh, of those... I'm, I'm Sorry? It's one of those things that you're like, oh yeah, wait, I can do that as well. And mm. then... Just that little added bit on top. Mm. Like with this week, it's the, um, the the week that we're talking, the um, emissary quest is up for the world quests. So if you did that plus the contract, then you'd have a whole bunch of extra rep. But people don't even know about the the like the weekly bonus that you have when you're in game, you know, whether it's PvP or Battlegrounds or Pets or whatever. Some people still don't even realise that that's a thing. So, yeah, check your calendar and make sure what the bonus is for the week and then do whatever you need to do for that week. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This one I'm always very curious about. What has the Warcraft community meant to you? Mm. Um, my, my Warcraft community pretty much involves my raid team. Um, huh? and my blogging community and there was a time where um, the the blogging community was massive we you know we had a lot of people we used to do shared topics um, mm -hmm. we all knew each other we you know we're all I've still got a whole bunch of people friended on my my um, my battle net account 
I don't speak to them. I see them pop on and off and, you know, oh, maybe I should, you know, message them, but we're different time zones and things usually, but um, it, it's meant it, a lot to me because mm -hmm. you can bounce ideas off people, you can have discussions with them, you get different points of view. Um, and I know I'm, <clears throat> I'm a little bit, uh, as people would say, hot tempered. So um, it's good to get other people that are, you know, much calmer and, you know, can give you a different point of view and, and think about, make you think about, you know, what's got you going up and all that kind of thing. And it, it makes a big difference to how I see the game and how much I enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. um, it means that, you know, part of it, I guess, is that I have to find reasons to play the game so that I can keep blogging as well. So. Mm -hmm. I like blogging because I like talking to people and I like having people comment and I like to be able to respond back to them and then get discussion. And so that for me is like, okay, well, I need to you know, think about what I'm chasing this week or what I can blog about this week. So it gives me a reason to log into the game as well because the community is there and not that I have very many followers at the moment or any readers, I sort of drop off every now and again. Um, but I, you know, I know that I do have readers out there and, and they've been following me for a while. so. I want to make sure that I've always got something for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, for me, I like the community. I think they they do a lot for me personally. So, you know, I think they're really good. There's a lot of really good people in the, in the community. Well, that's good to hear. That's always good to hear. Yeah. Now we go to the, the weird question, <laughs> which <laughs> is, what is your whisper? And for those who are not in the know, a whisper is my field experiment, really. But um, it, it could be anything. So, you know, a wish for, for the game, um, maybe mechanics that you want implemented or taken out, or uh, fairy crafting about the story, basically anything that you would like to see happen in World of Warcraft. So what would be your whisper? Um, I think, um, uh, geez, there's so many things that you could say to that. Like that's, I'll, there are so many things <laughs> um, <clears throat> that you could, you know, want or think you need or, you know, um, I, I think I would like to see a bit more diversity between the classes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, they're working on that they're doing better with it but like I, I yeah but I don't really want diversity I don't know like if I'm looking at my mage for example I sort of miss the fact that I can't have bits and pieces from every spec so I I wanted to be a mage that could throw some fireballs around but I want to be able to do arcane explosion at the same time you can't do that anymore mm -hmm. um and I I think that they've made them so specific that you can't just be your own class kind of thing mm -hmm. so you have to you have to be what they tell you to be and that's it. whereas I'd like to sort of maybe just have a mage have all of the talents and and skills available to me and then pick what I like from that um, same as my druid like I maybe I want to be a cat half the time but I want to be a boom in the other half so maybe there's bosses that would be better for me to be melee mm -hmm. but I'd don't necessarily want to be in there the whole time as a cat so could I not just pick and choose the bits you know that I could play boomy for this part of the, the boss fight and then I could be uh, a kitty cat for the other part I just have to change um, the spells that I've got or that I know you know hmm. I kind of like the, the whole all the options available to me that I can pick and choose what I want then I think that's D&D &D coming out maybe no, but I think you have a very good point because it would make it less cookie cutter builds that you yeah. get and a more like personal preference with certain things. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that would be impossible to theory craft though. Like, how could anyone prove what was the better DPS then? Uh, that would just be horrific. But I think just from a fun aspect, it would be cool to just have open plethora, uh, open plethora on, the, on the spells, go crazy, pick what you want, and then play it as you want to play it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Oh, I like that idea. Or it would be terrible. It could be both. <laughs> well, we'll see that when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's it's definitely an interesting thought, I think. Because um, I've heard several people say that, you know, the classes aren't... They are unique, but not that unique. Um, because mm -hmm. everyone kind of plays the same spec. Um, which makes me... Or not spec, but even a build. So it makes me sometimes wonder yeah. why we even have that option of build. Because everyone is doing the same thing anyway mm. 
Um, but no, that is a very interesting fall. Mm. All right. What? I think it's because you have to mid-max if you want to do anything in the game. There has to be a min and there has to be a max, and I, I, I don't like that about that about the game, to be honest. I, I want to be able to pick whatever spells I want, and I should be able to do the same amount of damage as everyone else based on that. Like it shouldn't, you know. But that's that's the bane of DPS class, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well. Melanie, thank you so much for the interview. If people want to find you on the interwebs, where can they find you and your blog? Uh, yeah, so my blog's just azerothianlife.com um, and I'm on Twitter as Dragon Ray, pretty much Dragon Ray everywhere. So if you see Dragon Ray, it's likely me. <laughs> Had that handle for a long time. So yeah, but Twitter and, and, and my blog are, are the two places that I'm the most on perfect and I will make sure that that link because I'm atrocious at spelling I will make sure that that link goes into the show notes so that people can <laughs> find it also but again thank you so much for, for getting up so early and for having a chat about all things Warcraft uh, my pleasure it was absolute pleasure so I hope you enjoyed that interview I had with Dragon Ray and of course make sure that you follow her blog it's a really good read and let's go to what you guys said on Twitter. I posted two questions. Uh, the first one was if you get really creative because of World of Warcraft. And you guys responded. And Amanda, also known as Falamoya Krava, who is of course one of the hosts of the Geek Herring, said I crocheted a Hearthstone. And you know what? I'm really jealous because that's one of the things I really want to start picking up. I've seen so many cute things that people make with uh, crocheting. I think I want to pick that up and learn how to, to do that. So um, I think you need to uh, talk to me, Amanda, about how, how to do this. Um, Jordan said, beer boasted uh, boar ribs, steaming chicken soup and gingerbread cookies from WoW are some of my favorites. So you've made those. That's really cool. Um, I really feel like I need to get this, this um, cookbook now. Aaron Wilbanks, also known as the Bigger Cheesy, said, My girlfriend at Splash of Magic uh, and I made mana buns and a Pandaren peanut chicken from the WoW cookbook. And they posted some pictures, and guys, it looks really good. So if you want to see those pictures, go to the Twitter account that's at whispers underscore off underscore war, and you can see the pictures that they posted. It looks really, really nice. Um, Gwen Dark Iris, who's been a guest before, said, Yeah, I've made several banners, and when I bake, I make things like uh, Hearthstone. I use the Hearthstone cookbook. I paint DD minis using Blizzard art for inspiration and more. And she also posted a several pictures of all her artwork, and it looks amazing, guys. Like, honestly, do yourself a favor and have a look. Um, and the Scruffy Druid Lady said, I have the cookbook that I love cooking from. The turkey was awesome. The jerky is amazing. On my own, Loot Optional was inspired by it, so I tried to dedicate a section to just Blizz News with Blizzard Bites. <laughs> so that's really cool, I like that. Um, and finally, Scrubs vs. The World said, I decided to make a podcast. Hey, I think, you know, that's a lot of us who start out like that. You get inspired by World of Warcraft, you want to do something with it. Why not make a podcast or a blog? Why not? Okay, so another question that I posted on the Twitter account was your BlizzCon predictions. Now I'm going to keep asking this the closer we get to, to BlizzCon. Um, I just want to hear some things. I like the snark that some of you posted, so I'll come to that in a second. Um, the crosshair said... Um, so this is all about the uh, BlizzCon predictions. The crosshair said something new would be nice, or maybe Diablo 4. I kind of want to get back to Diablo, otherwise I'm not too fussed. Yeah, I want to see... I still feel, and I know this is a little bit more Blizzard uh, than just World of Warcraft, I feel that Diablo 3 just ended in a really weird way. Like, I, I want more story there, and even the, um, the the Reaper thing, that just, yeah, it, all of a sudden I was like, is this it? Is this the story? That feels really disjointed and just sudden. 
You know, it left me really feeling a little bit like, hmm, I am not satisfied with this. So I'm hoping that we'll get something with Diablo. Um, just because I like how dark it is. It's much darker than any of the other things we've seen from Blizzard. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping the same thing. Uh, Nick Z said, I, uh, it'd be great if the new WoW expansion updated the old world like a new cataclysm. But I doubt that would happen. Expect Diablo 4 and a new mobile IP. Oh, mobile. Um, yes, I'm sure they will do something with mobile. Because isn't that where the market is nowadays? All the, the money for mobile gaming and things like that. It will be interesting. It will be really interesting to see. And if we get an update to the world. Um, Tom O'Lantern said, hopefully Diablo 4 and the next WoW expansion. More for Diablo. Okay. And the spooky good girl said, I want mobile pet battles. Girl, you and me both. <laughs> I'm so into Pokemon Go that I really would love to have something that is on my mobile phone. And if it's that, I would be very much into that. Um, yeah, strangely enough, I'm, I'm really into pet battling uh, at times. So Adam Walker said, <laughs> Shiny Censorship Simulator 2020. I see what you did there. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I, I don't feel like I'm the person who should be saying anything about this just because I don't have the knowledge or anything. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that will affect them for this BlizzCon. It will be really interesting. Um, Kristen said, still hoping for player housing with the next expansion. Again, I'm with you there. I, I would love to see something like that. Uh, Kevin Weber said, I'm hoping for a Diablo 4 update or announcement, Overwatch PvE details, and maybe a teaser of the next WoW expansion. Although I'd be happy with the first two. I'd be interested in Diablo Immortal just for curiosity. You know what? I, I have nothing against mobile gaming. I am looking forward to playing Diablo Immortal on the, on the phone. Don't hate me, <laughs> but I really am looking forward to that. Um, Cal JB said, really want something on Diablo 4. I would like a WoW expansion that makes me want to return to the game. Maybe Overwatch 2. Overall, just really hyped for this BeastCon. Yeah, so am I. I'm really, really hyped for this. Um, I, I don't know. I just feel like there's going to be more. Like last year was a bit of a dud from what I heard. Uh, and from what I've seen some of the videos, I wasn't overly enthusiastic and I was happy, at, well, happy. I felt okay that I didn't buy the ticket, uh, the, the virtual ticket. But this year I really feel like I, I need to see it. I need to see what happens. So, um, I also received one more tweet from um, Hexclavier or Exclavier. <laughs> and this was about last week, about me struggling to find the name of the boy in Winnie the Pooh. And he said, hello, my name is Christopher Robin. That is all. You are so right. And I, I think it is because I grew up with the Dutch name, um, which is Janneman Robinson. Uh, I know that sounds really, really stupid, but that's the Dutch version of Christopher Robin. And I just couldn't get to the name. I thought, what is it? What is it? So, thank you. Thank you for ending my suffering there. Um, now, to continue some suffering, I am going to uh, continue my series about a role play. Um, so, last week we talked all about, you know, the personality of your character. Now, personalities have to come from somewhere. And not just from class. Uh, so, this week we're going to talk about the backstory. And that sometimes can be a bit of an issue for people. Now, I'm going to give you a cheat way and I'm going to give you maybe a proper way of doing it. So the cheat way is not having to fill anything in and just say to people, if you want to know my backstory, feel free to ask me. And a lot of people don't do that in game. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't really post my entire backstory in my TRP profile. I don't see the point in that because I feel it is great to know your character's backstory, but if that is a whole novel, 
No one has time to read that in-game, or at least I don't think there are a lot of people around who have the time and the patience to read that. So, if it's purely for you, you don't need to write it all down. Uh, but don't expect people to know everything about your back background. Also, people won't really use your background story to talk to you if they don't know you. I mean, think about it. You know, if I talk to someone in the streets, they don't know my background. They don't know my background story of, of me moving to Holland and everything. You ask questions. And that's how you learn about someone else. So I think for yourself, you need to have a little bit, if you do want to have a background, have a little bit of an idea of where your character is in their lives. Now, with humans, that is... I wouldn't say easier, but it is a little bit easier compared to like the races who get really old. Uh, think of uh, elves, think of Draenei. I mean, these are beings that can get like thousands of years old. So that's a lot of history. Um, and I don't think any of us has the time to say, you're one, this is, you know, no one, no one does that. And if you do, my God. You have a lot of time. <laughs> so, um, think about the general big things. So, if your character was in their 20s, what happened in the last 20 years in Azeroth? Um, how would they have responded to, you know, were they there when Deathwing uh, started raiding the city? Or, or did he actually raid the city? But well, you know what I mean. Or, how do they feel about uh, the, the whole thing with Garrosh? If they were present with that were they serving in the army already or were they uh, just farmers who might have I don't know been part of raids with, with the Defiers Brotherhood and then thought you know what okay I need to take up arms things like that you just have to start thinking okay what happened in this timeline where would they have been and how would they respond to things like that is where your personality comes from so someone who might have been very calm in the past, maybe now they, they have a temper or they have certain anxieties because of what happened in their past. So that's really talking about your character's history. Um, you don't have to go into it too deep. I see a lot of people who just said, grew up in a uh, farmer's family, for instance, in Westfall, um, but decided after the uh, rebellion of Vanessa van Cleef that they wanted to do something for Stormwind, fight for Stormwind, and they took up arms. Something like that. It can be really small. Of course you can flesh it out more and more and more, but I, I would just keep in mind that no one really reads a novel. If it's for yourself, so do you know uh, as a reference for your own character, okay, well, this is where they are coming from, so, you know, for instance, if you have 10 different RP characters, it might get a little bit difficult to really distinguish them. And it's a good thing for yourself, then do it. You know, write all you want. It, it is still your character, but don't expect other people to read it all. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, keep track of that. If you want to know anything about timelines, the, the official timeline, you can go to the one main website. Um, and it will all be on there. You can also go to the unofficial one, which is on like WoW wikis. Um, even if you go to like the races on WoW wiki, you can also see a little bit of timelines there. So that will make it easier for you to see, well, for instance, my Blood Elf, were they in this war? Were they in that war? Or would they have been born after that? Was it before or after Kilfas left? Things like that. Um, so yeah, it's back backstories are very personal. You can put a lot of stuff in there. Um, again, I would have to <laughs> make sure that try not to be like a key figure uh, in in anything big that happened. You know, uh, maybe you could say that you were part of the 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 army that took down Onyxia. I guess you could really put it a little bit like that. But I know that the game at times makes you into the hero of Azeroth. We're all heroes of Azeroth, unfortunately, so you're not that unique anymore. Um, I would really try and step away from being special. Does that make sense? Um, try to find a reason for your character, though. So that's a little bit of like... So I would go for something like a motivator or a catalyst event, which could be 
maybe someone dying in their family or uh, or being murdered even or maybe a big war or something big happened to them and that is more like a dramatic event in the, in your character's life which pushes them into the direction they are going now so if you have something like that um, that would be amazing for your character I think because you make them more interesting however if you just want to play someone who uh, you know, vendors. I've seen a lot of street vendors in, in uh, Stormwind. Then you don't have to really have like a big thing. You can still have it in there, but you don't have to have a big catalyst, really. So again, if you just want to play a character that is, you know, that character from birth on, they haven't really changed much. This is just their personality and, and nothing big has happened. That is fine too. You'll just play a predisposed character. So you can either go with someone who had a, cat a catalyst in their life, a big event, or someone who's just been a very consistent person. You can build that way. Just just make it for yourself clear, okay, what do I want with my character? And it doesn't mean that your character can't change through the time. Y you know, you can't go from a catalyst to a predisposed, but you can go from a predisposed to a catalyst kind of character. Um, so maybe now nothing has happened, but maybe the next expansion all of a sudden you feel like yes This is where my character rises to a different type of, of Background history because now this has happened to them. I hope that makes sense Anyhow background stories. They are tricky. They're very tricky. I would um, Urge you if you if you want to read Try and find some people with their backgrounds up uh, click on the, the TRP icons, just read some of their backgrounds, don't copy it. Again, never copy people's backgrounds or any information, it's really frowned upon. But take inspiration or take some information out of it that you're like, oh, okay, so that's how I could do it. Um, and just, you know, do something that makes you happy in the end. But again, I can't stress this enough. Don't expect people to read it before they start interacting with you. You, you... You know, some people just don't read background stories or, or TRP profiles at all. So that's really it. Um, next week, we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, the, the pitfalls of RP and, and certain things that can happen. And with that, we've also come to the end of the show. So thank you so much for, for downloading. I know I sound a bit grotty. Uh, I feel really crap as well. But I still appreciate the downloads and I, I've seen that a lot of you have shared um, the links and stuff and, and given me feedback and I think you guys are absolutely fucking fantastic. So thank you all for that. It's really nice hearing uh, all the, the sweet things that you guys say. Now, if you want to be part of, uh, of the podcast, I will need uh, new voices soon because I'm starting to dwindle down on my pre-recorded interviews uh, and I would love to talk to to new people or old people who've already been on the show hey you want to come back my door is open so you can find the podcast on whispersofwar.podbean.com or go to twitter at whispers underscore of underscore war my personal one is mcmonkeys that's mc monkeys with a z uh, of course you can email the show whispers of war podcast at gmail.com i'm on twitch uh, twitch.tv forward slash mcmonkeys with two z's and again you know i need guests and if you want to talk about it on Discord, you can do that too. Come and find us, all the wonderful people who um, are part of the Dragon Powered Studios. So go to dragonpoweredstudio.com forward slash Discord and you will get our Discord information. Come have a chat with us. We hold game uh, days as well in the weekend. So you can uh, flip some tables, <laughs> which I think has happened in the past. Play a little bit of Werewolf and, and all those other games. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I need to get into that again. I'm, I'm often not there on Saturday, so unfortunately I am often predisposed with stuff. Um, but there are many amazing people you can play some games with. So yeah, totally join us on Discord. And that's it. I hope that you guys have an amazing time in Azeroth and uh, be nice to each other. That's my, my biggest thing I think that we need to get from this week. Be really nice to each other. 
and I will talk to you all next week. Bye bye. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com. Thank <laughs> you.